suggests that the Farababanta campus was on an ideal location to accommodate the university. Fai argued space and geographical proximity were the main factors that made Farababanta to stand out. There are other things. This is not the university. This is not the only. These are not the only buildings that are going to be the University of the Gambia. There are other things, other components that are going to come, including facilities for a medical school. For those of us that have been involved in it since the beginning, we know why we are here at Faraba Banta. We, we, we expect to have faculties of engineering and you name it, and everything that you need in, to warrant you calling it the university village. So the main reason why we are here is for want of space, which we cannot get anywhere closer than here in Farababanta. Science and technology is a priority area for the government, and the University of the Gambia is trying to focus its attention to meet the increasing demand. In the absence of science and technology, this country may not get closer to its dream. The inauguration ceremony that we are to witness very soon is a clear manifestation of government's resolve to invest in science and technology for the rapid socio-economic and technological advancement of this country. There is ample evidence to support the view that science and technology is really the engine for development, and that nations which are developed and industrialized today achieve such advancement through the tools of science and technology. Scientific study attempts to explore and understand the working of the physical world. It tries to analyze the occurrences in nature and gain knowledge about nature through experimentation. Our scientific research aims at gaining knowledge of the complexities of, the, of nature. It is important for the progress of mankind. The seemingly impossible feats have been made possible thanks to scientific research. In order to achieve this feat as a nation, we need to make a conscious effort at encouraging its study and application. I therefore challenge research scholars far and near to jump at this opportunity to conduct meaningful research here for the advancement of the Gambia in particular and of humanity in general. With this fully equipped computer labs loaded with highly sophisticated systems, the university is gradually moving to a place where research is going to be the mainstay. There is no genius out there who do not sit hunchback way down deep in the middle of the night using the best gift that God has given mankind, which is the mind and the brain, to optimize their potential. And we are hoping that this is the place where Gambian youths and Gambian creative human beings out there, and perhaps non-human beings can even come and join the party here at the Science Park, <laughs> because they do exist. The university has been urged to do more to ensure that it has a respectable and enviable position in world tertiary education rankings. The Vice Chancellor, Professor Mohamed Uka, said the President, who is also the Chancellor, has raised the bar and tasked the authorities to work towards that direction. He has set a very clear destination point and vision for this university. All of us who are in the circles of academe knows how difficult it is to be amongst the top 1,000, let alone the top 500, and more importantly, to be amongst the top five. The work must begin yesterday. There are very few universities in Africa that can claim to be ranked among the top 500. So you can see the enormity of the challenge that he has set for not only the university, but for this country and for every Gambian here or anywhere. Khadija Dujalo said her colleagues have been expressing concern about how to go to Faraba Banta should lectures be mounted there next semester. Before thanking His Excellency, I will start by making a promise. Because it's been a while that students have been coming to our office and lodging their complaints that they will be coming here next semester and they are worried about transportation. But I think this uh, gesture came at the right time and we thank His Excellency for, and we promise that the, the labs and the bosses will serve the intended, intended purpose in order to ensure its durability. 
The presentation of these buses and computers is part of the important steps the University of Gambia is taking before it eventually leaves Brikama to Faraba, where it hopes to transfer in the coming years. Ibrahim Abalde, GRTS. We now go for a break. When we come back, we bring you the story of the African men who brought African taste to France. Many people, as soon as they leave Africa, they tend to completely forget the continent. However, as we hear in this report by ICCC, one African man is breaking a record in France. city of more than two million is a place that people from all over the world call home. When you have a group of people that come from other places, so of course it's not always easy, but some of them manage extremely well. The immigrants of Paris define the city just as much as its art and culture. What is interesting for me, as I observe, because I've lived in Paris for 50 years, uh, is to see that the numbers are not only increasing but exploding and when I know because I see figures and I put two and two together and I know that the population of Africa is going to be double of what it is today by 2050 then of course there'll be many 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 more Africans who will come here this week on inside Africa a home away from home we take a look into the lives of African immigrants in Paris. 